All right, so in the last couple of weeks, a lot of rumors and leaks have been making their rounds over the internet on future CPUs and GPUs. So let's make it a little easier by uh, giving ourselves a full timeline of all of the rumors. This will also help if I ever make a leaks versus reality video. So stay tuned. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a second to thank today's video sponsor, WhoKeys. WhoKeys is where you can buy keys like this one for Windows 10 Pro. Get yourself a license with that link down in the description and click buy now and enter the code BTS25 for 25% off. And then you just submit your order. And once you're through with your payment and you receive your key, go to your computer, click on the Windows button, type in activate and update or change your product key. It's that simple. Let's start with the CPUs. Over on the blue team, we got Alder Lake. According to current rumors and leaks, this CPU family would be announced in its entirety on October 27th this year during the Intel Innovation event with Pat Gelsinger, with its flagship being the 8 plus 8 cores 24 thread 12900K. This family of CPUs would then be available for purchase on November 19th, so that's not too far away. So that's Q4 of 2021. The generation that follows Alder Lake S would be Raptor Lake S. It would bring a doubling in the small cores department, bringing the total number of CPU cores to eight performance cores and 16 eco cores for a total of 32 threads. Raptor Lake S would be unveiled in a uh, year, so Q4 of 2022. Then we have AMD. The next lineup of CPUs is allegedly planned for the end of this year slash early next year. It would still use the Zen 3 architecture, but with the 3D vCache. The cadence of the release schedule seems pretty consistent with other launches. Uh, it's about a year and a couple of months of wait between each Ryzen CPU releases. That should be Ryzen 6000, but we don't have any info on that. Anyways, after the Zen 3D vCache models, there seemed to be another Zen 3 variant coming in the first half of 2022. It's called Zen 3 XT. So Zen 3 XT could be a Ryzen 5 or even 6000 XT model, but we're not sure. All we have is this tweet from Twitter leaker Graymon55 saying that it's the original Zen 3, but with bug fixes, which I guess is security fixes, and higher frequency. This leads me to believe that AMD might do something similar to what they did in their laptop segment. They were doing Zen 3s and 2s and 3s and 2 from top of the line to uh, the bottom of the segment. We could see Zen 3 3D vCache available for the highest end models, and the Zen 3 XT in the mid to lower end with a lower price than what we have right now. It could be interesting, to say the least. Then, in between these two Zen 3 releases, there would be Rembrandt. It would make its first appearance in the desktop APU market in Q1 of 2022. This is a Zen 3-based APU, but with RDNA 2-based graphics, something similar to what is in the Steam Deck right now. I'm pretty pumped for that one, specifically because it'll be the first APU that we can buy with RDNA 2 graphics. And then there's Zen 4, which would be available for Q4 of 2022. So yeah, these are pretty tight releases there. There's also Chagall, which is the next generation of Threadripper CPUs. It was supposed to be announced later this year, but it has apparently been delayed to next year. So that's something to keep in mind. So that's it for the CPUs. Let's move on to the GPUs. So let's start with the end of this year, 2021. On the red team, we got the RX 6600 non-XT coming. The review Views are set to go live on the 13th, so that's next week, and usually the launch date isn't far from it, so yeah, we'll have to wait for that. It would have 28 compute units and 8 gigabytes of GDDR6. Then we have NVIDIA, so let's go to the end of 2021, but maybe this is most likely to happen in the Q1 of 2022. So there's CES in January, and it's one of the best places to announce new products. For NVIDIA, we would apparently see the RTX 3000 super lineup come up for the first time. If you want to know more about these rumored GPUs, click up here to check out the video that I made
made about that. But it's basically a refresh of most of the lineup and a massive upgrade for one of the cards. On top of the Super's refresh, there would also apparently be a RTX 3070 Ti, this time with 16 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 10. This might just be a studio version for laptops though, since those generally have more VRAM. While all this is happening, we can't forget that a card might come back from the dead, but with an upgrade. We talked about this card a couple of times a couple of weeks ago, but it's the RTX 2060 12 gigabytes, and it too would come in in Q1 of next year. And lastly, with Intel in Q1, we should see their first Alchemist GPUs planned to hit the mid-range market. Now, Alchemist might first start out in the laptop market, and if you wanted to get a discrete card, like a proper GPU, well, you might have to wait a couple of extra months to the latter part of the first half of 2022. Something like hmm, April to June. Then there's that kind of nice quiet time from all three companies in Q3. Enough time to save some money. And then it's Q4, and uh, it's where our pockets will bleed. Starting off with AMD, Navi 33 should make its first appearance. This is what is supposed to be the 7600 XT. I have a video that talks about this specific GPU and its rumored performance, but it would apparently reach our X6900 XT levels of performance. It's a beast if it's true, it would even beat it. As for Nvidia, well, Ada Lovelace would make its first appearance. Nvidia always goes balls to the wall showing their best first, so don't expect them to hold back. The best uh, of the RTX 4000 series will be there, likely 4090, 4080, 4070, all at the same time. Probably with a little bit of TI sprinkled in. Sorry, TIE. And lastly, we have Q1 of 2023, where Navi 31 would come through. That would be AMD's RX 7800 series and anything above. Personally, I really like that AMD might start with the mid-range before introducing more powerful GPUs. I think it makes a little more sense. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the catch up of everything that is coming in the PC market for the next couple of years. I mean, a lot of it will probably shift, but that's why I'm making this video. So I come back, see how accurate these are, and uh, do a leaks versus reality video. Anyways, hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it. A comment if you want to talk about today's timeline. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.